So you got a brand new printer? Well, we've got the tools. We're going to tell you about them. Stick around. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. I'm Richard Cleveland, your host here. I'm here with you three times a week, every Tuesday, Thursday, and we do a live stream every Saturday night. If you're new here or this is your first time, by all means, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Also, ding that little bell so you get notified every time we do a brand new episode. Now, let's just jump into it because we got a lot to cover. You probably got yourself some new 3D printing gear over the holidays because it is 2019 now. And with that, you might be missing a few tools. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about all the tools that you should po probably have in your toolkit for your 3D printing hobby. Now, you'll see I've got a lot of tools here beside me. And I've got some over here. Everything that is in this case, we're going to be giving away. I'm going to tell you about that at the end of the show. But let's start with the first tool that everybody should have is either going to be glue, masking tape, or the, this dreaded stuff, which I hate, hairspray. These are your three primary adhesion methods. Now, I don't use hairspray. I'm not a big fan of hairspray. The hairspray can get into your fans, gum them up, and all kinds of things. Um, and it just, it's just attracts dust really badly. So let's throw that back in the drawer. Masking tape can leave behind residue. You can use the blue masking tape, the painter's tape, which won't leave behind residue um, or is not prone to doing that. But sometimes um, masking tape is not always my favorite either because again, you got to take it off the bed and throw it away. But why not just put a little bit of glue stick on that glass on your bed and uh, go ahead and stick your part down. Now, this is purple glue stick, uh, the Elmer's brand. Now, Elmer's is not sponsoring any of the products that we have in here, um, but uh, I use this stuff all the time. Jess uses this, Brian uses this, everybody on our team uses this stuff to, uh, to put down your, your print, get it to stick to your bed. So that's one thing. Now, moving on, we wanna talk about spatulas. Now, you may have gotten one of these with your 3D printer. Um, I like this one because it's got a nice wide edge on it. These are unsharpened when we get them, um, but it will be sharpened when you get it. And what I typically will do is I will round off these corners as well. Uh, mine's not here. Mine's at home, actually. My one like this is at home, I believe. But I like to round off these corners so they don't dig into you when you're trying to get parts apart or get it off your bed. That's right, it'd be good for Jess because she stabs herself all the time. Now, other two things that you're gonna need are hair pliers or needle nose pliers, like these ones, and we're gonna put that in the toolkit as well. And a pair of flush cutters. Now, you may have gotten some of these with your 3D printer, or you may have gotten some of these with your 3D printer. But if you didn't, both of these can also be found at any hobby shop. Um, they're probably going to be a little bit more expensive when you buy them at a hobby shop, but uh, I really like them. Um, these are the Brev Lion, uh, or the Brev Lion version of those, and these are the Plateau side cutters. These side cutters are great for everything, from snipping... Uh, your wires to um, snipping your filament and getting that nice sharp point on your filament. Something else you may want to have on with your 3D printer is a ceramic screwdriver. Now, I recommend these ceramic screwdrivers because um, sometimes we have to adjust the potentiometers on our stepper drivers, uh, which are on the main board of our 3D printers. Now, every main board should have a way to adjust your stepper drivers. We're going to go into a video later on down the line um, and show you exactly how to do that. But this is a ceramic one, so it won't um, 
basically it won't short out against anything, so it's, it protects you. Uh, also, good pair of tweezers is essential. Um, we're going to include these as well for you. A hobby knife. Everybody needs a hobby knife. It also helps to have a good sharp hobby knife and extra blades. So this uh, is an exacto knockoff, I'm pretty sure. And uh, we've got a pack of blades to go along with that. The reason that we I like having a hobby knife is because the hobby knife itself is good for getting supports out of really tight areas. It's good for cleaning up your model. Um, it's good for cutting. It's good for all kinds of purposes. Now, the three biggest things on this list. It's important that you have sockets. So we've got this socket set, uh, Fuller brand socket set, that has both imperial and metric drivers in it or sockets in it the reason you really only need one or two sockets but i'm going to include a whole set and the reason that is is it's so much easier to take the nozzle off your printer when you've got a socket set instead of using a pair of pliers so you can also use this for other stuff but we're going to put it inside the box for you so you're going to get a full socket set this is uh how many pieces 40 pieces 40 piece socket set we're also going to include this iFixit kit. Um, this is a 64-bit driver kit from iFixit. Um, this, they're high-performance bits. There's a whole selection of the bits on the back. Let's go to this close-up camera. I don't know how well it's going to show up there, but you can see that there's all kinds of bits in there. And the most important ones for you guys are going to be the hex kit or hex driver or nut driver um, tips. They go from 2.5 all the way up to 5.5, uh, which are the most standard hex head screws that you're going to find. It's also got a collection of Torx, flatheads, Phillips, um, squares, uh, spanners. There's a triangle in here. There's all kinds of little things. Also to help you um, fix some of your other stuff around the house. So this is the iFixit 64-bit driver kit, something I highly recommend. We're going to throw that in as well. And last but not least, um, lithium grease. Lithium grease is an essential part of any 3D printer. Um, it helps to keep your bearings greased. It helps to keep your rods greased. Um, and it helps to keep your 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 printer working in tip-top order and cuts down on some of the noise as well. Some of the other things um, that I'm going to recommend to you, uh, they won't be in the kit that's coming out. Oh, and you get a nice little Stanley toolbox. Look at that. We're going to put all this stuff in a nice Stanley toolbox. One of the tools that I use is this tool right here. This tool is designed for deburring. This is a deburring tool. And what it does, it helps to get into the edges. If I had a, oh, here we go. If you've got a bit of an elephant's, elephant's foot around your print, you can always use this and you can see it'll just pull that material right off. And then you can, you'll have a nice clean print at the end. So a deburring tool is essential. I would uh, get one of these off of Amazon. Um, some Kapton tape, always good to have. Uh, you can put the Kapton tape uh, on the bed um, as a sort of a, a surface if you need to. But it really works well when you've got, uh, you're trying to tie your thermistor down uh, onto your heated bed or around your um, hot end. Then last but not least, are some calipers. Now, I would go out and get myself a good set of calipers um, so that you can measure your cubes and make sure that your cubes are all coming out properly. They're all coming out to the dimensions that you set up inside your slicer. So these are all very important pieces that I would add to my kit. Uh, we're gonna get you started, but uh, Think about going out and getting a, some caliper, digital calipers, one of these guys, a deburring tool, and some Kapton tape, and you should be all set to go. Now, 
We're going to close this up. We're going to tell you how you can get involved and try and win one of these. Now, unfortunately, this is only going to be available to our North American viewers. So anybody in the U.S. or in Canada, um, just because shipping rates are outrageous to overseas places, I do apologize. Um, once we get some other stuff sponsored, then we'll uh, we'll be able to do that. But for now... Uh, we are only, this contest is only open to those in North America. So what do you have to do? To enter, you have to subs be subscribed to our YouTube channel. You also have to leave a like on this video and a comment down below with the hashtag year of the maker. So this year, our whole theme is making. So this is going to be year of the maker. Hashtag year of the maker. In the comments, everybody who's put that in for the next two weeks, we're going to take all of those, we're going to put them into a digital hat, and we are going to draw a winner. Okay, so you have to be in North America. You have to use the hashtag Year of the Maker. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave that comment underneath this video. So for now, that's pretty much it. It's a short one to start the year. Coming up on the next video, we're going to dive back into our CR10 upgrades, and we are going to show you how to do that BL Touch. Add that BL Touch to your uh, upgraded CR10. So you want to check back with us on Thursday for that episode, and on Saturday night, we are going to have our live stream. It's the TFL Call for Help. So you can uh, send us your questions to... Um, info at the first layer dot com and uh, we will uh, get to your questions on the show. You can also join us in the live stream chat so that you can uh, get your questions answered there as well. Pretty soon we will have it set up so you can actually call in as well. So stick around. We'll let you know when that's coming. But for now, we're going to say goodbye. We're going to dive into the new year slowly. And I want to thank Jess who's behind the controls today. There she is, and uh, I also want to thank you guys for tuning in and uh, watching today's episode. Go out, if you don't have these tools, go out and get some of them for yourselves, or try and win the ones that we're going to give away. All right, let's thank Spool3D for all the support that they give us through giving us this wonderful room to use uh, in their retail location so that we can bring you the show three times a week. And every Saturday night, as I said, we are live streaming, and we're doing that from my home. So Tuesdays and Thursdays right here on the first layer here in the studio and Saturdays from my home. So until next time, my friends, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.